In this video, we're going to create a custom Axie Streaming IP in Vivado. Axie Streaming IPs are useful when you have to do some kind of processing to a stream of data, such as samples coming from an ADC, or images coming from a camera. We're going to build an IP with both a slave and a master Axie Streaming interface. I could also say an input and an output interface. The custom IP is going to be written in Verilog. To test out the IP, we're going to use a DMA to push data into our custom IP and to pull data back out of it. To keep the code simple, the custom IP will just buffer the input data and make it available at the master interface. In other words, we'll be making an Axis Streaming FIFO. So this block diagram shows what we're going to put together in Vivado. The Zinc processor system will need a general purpose Axie master interface for controlling the DMA. It will also need a high performance Axie slave interface so that the DMA can access the DDR memory. Then on the other side of the DMA, we've got our custom Axie streaming IP. Okay, so let's get started. First we create the project. Now we're going to name this micro Z custom axis streaming IP click next it's an RTL project with no code now I want to set this up for the micro Z 7010 board So the first thing we do is create a block design. Now in the block design, we've got to press the plus button and add our zinc processing system. And then of course, we've got to apply the board preset by clicking on run block automation. Now we're going to create our custom IP by using the create and package new IP. We're going to create a new Axie 4 peripheral. Now here we're going to set up the name of the peripheral to be uh, Axie S FIFO. Now in this window here, we get to set up the interfaces that we want. Using the plus and minus button, we can add more interfaces or delete interfaces. Now I've just added two interfaces. I want them both to be Axis streaming interfaces. And I want one of them to be a master and the other to be a slave. Then I'll delete the first one that was there by default. And I can click next and I want to edit the IP so I'll click on edit the IP and that will open up a new Vivado window that allows me to make modifications to the IP now the IP packager will generate code to drive each of the interfaces that you created in the previous window you can see those files up in the project manager it's worthwhile taking a look at the code in those files. You might find it useful. In this example, we're actually going to overwrite the generated code and replace it with code for our Axie Streaming FIFO. The code for the Axie Streaming FIFO comes from Alex Forensic. You can find it on his GitHub repo. We're going to use a slightly modified version of that Axie Streaming FIFO and I'll post it below the video. So here I'm just selecting all the code and pasting over it with the new code. Here's a quick look at the code. You can see it has an Axie Streaming slave and a master interface. Now when we save the file you'll see that the auto generated modules for the slave and master interface are no longer part of the hierarchy because they're not getting instantiated by the top file anymore. So now we just have to click review and package and repackage the IP 
and I want to close the, the Vivado window by clicking yes. Now the zinc uh, processing system has to be reconfigured so that I have a general purpose Axie master interface so that I can control the DMA. And I also need access to the DDR memory. So I need to enable a high performance Axie slave port. And I'm just gonna check my clock configuration so I know I can see here I've got a 100 megahertz clock being generated. It's one of the fabric clocks. And lastly, I'm going to enable interrupts from the fabric so that my DMA can pass interrupts through to the processing system. Now I'm going to connect up my clock, the fabric clock, the 100 megahertz fabric clock. I'm going to use it for both of my Axie interfaces. Now I'm going to add my concat, which is going to be used for the interrupts. So I'm going to have two interrupts to connect from the DMA. Now I can add my DMA. Now I'm going to use the connection automation to connect up my Axilite interface and uh, the high performance Axis slave of the processing system. So the DMA actually has three interfaces that need to go through to the high performance Axis slave interface. So it's going to create the, the automation feature is going to create a an Axis smart connect or or an interconnect um, in order to route these three interfaces through to the DDR. So I just ran connection automation again for the last two interfaces. Now I notice I've got my status and control ports that I don't need. So I'm going to double click on the Axie DMA and I'm going to untick control status stream because I don't need those ports. They're for Ethernet designs. Now I'm going to hook up my interrupts through to the concat and now I'm pretty much ready to add my custom Axie streaming FIFO to the design so I find it now in the IP catalog now I'm going to hook up the Axie streaming interfaces to the DMA And I'm going to use the connection automation to hook up my Axie streaming clocks and resets. I'll save the block design. Now I've got to create a top, top level HDL wrapper. You can ignore these critical warning messages. They're due to the MicroZ board preset. Uh, I'll leave a link and an explanation in the notes below the video. So then I generate Bitstream. And then once the bitstream has been generated, I want to export hardware and include the bitstream. Now I'm exporting that to the SDK. So now once that's done, I can launch the SDK. I'm going to do it local to the project. So the first thing the SDK does is load in the hardware platform specification. 
your exported hardware design. So that should be the only thing in the workspace. Now I'm going to do a new application project and I'm going to do a hello world application to start with just so that I can test my hardware and make sure that I've got everything running properly, that my bitstream is good, that my UART connection is good. And then once that's working, then I'll do, then I'll test my actual custom IP. So I just plug in my USB UART to the computer and I see that the micro Z powers up. I open up my UART console. Now I know what COM port the, my micro Z loads up on my computer. If you don't know what your one does, you'll have to go into device manager and find it and figure it out. Now I'm going to load the bitstream, program the FPGA, And then when that's done, I see the FPGA done, the blue FPGA done LED light up. Now I want to go into run configuration so that I can run my Hello World application. And when I run it, I can see that my UART console has Hello World written in it. So I know that the application run correctly. So now what I'm doing is I'm making a new another application project but this time it's going to be the one to test my FIFO. I'm going to create an empty application because I'm going to add my own code to it. So <laughs> to test the application I'm going to use an example DMA test application that Xilinx provides. You'll find it in the Xilinx installation in the Vivado installation files or actually the, the Xilinx SDK installation files. Um, it's along with the driver for the Axi DMA in a folder called examples. Now I'm dragging and dropping the file called X Axi DMA example SG poll. So this example code, what that does is it tests out the DMA by sending or making the DMA send data out through the streaming interface and then reading what comes back through the streaming through the other streaming interface and comparing the two. So if we have hooked those up in loopback uh, or if you put them through an Axis streaming FIFO in loopback then you should uh, the application will pass because uh, the the data that's sent out is equal to the data that was received. So now to run our application we have to first select the FIFO test application and then we go into run configurations then in run configurations we have to double click on system debugger and then we can click run. Now of course we'll have to terminate the hello world application first. So we click yes. And when our application runs and it has run we can see in the UART console that it has successfully run so the DMA has been tested as has our custom IP.